Hey, Noah, this is going to be fun. I hope it is going to be fun. Uh, it's a pleasure <laughs> to be talking to you, Joel. I, I really enjoyed the film, uh, but I, I'd like to use this as an opportunity to explore the process of making an animated film because uh, I think personally we kind of we cl- glamorise the film set on live action, but animation I think is often treated as an underdog. And I think <laughs> to show it the, the detail and respect that it deserves. When you, you know, you first come on to this big animated film, particularly one that, you know, was, was first announced back in 2013, what's the first job that, that you have as a director? As a director, every project's, you know, it's its own unique thing. And, and in this case, I approach the movie as an, a fan of the first movie because I, I had the awesome opportunity to work side by side with Chris Anders and Kirk D'Amico while they're making Crudes. I was working on Kung Fu Panda and Shrek and other things. And so when I watched the first movie, I loved it. It was about family. It was set in this fantastical, crudacious period with all these crazy creatures. And for me, it was like, what's the next big story? And families change and evolve and felt like the the perfect next story is expanding the pack, expanding the crudes to meeting another family and having their worldviews challenged. And so that that's where we, we kicked off from. Look, Phil, they sleep in a pile. Ooh, fun! Yeah. Actually, everyone gets their own rooms. <gasps> we get separate rooms! What's a room? What's separate? We Bettermans believe that privacy promotes individuality. Unofficial motto. So you, you've worked for the majority of your career as a storyboard artist. Has that experience changed your approach to direction? Are there anything that you've learned working the day to day on animated films that you've managed to kind of put in place when you're the, the leader of this community? Storyboarding and animation is kind of being like a, a jack of all trades, master of none, <laughs> where you're looking at a scene in a movie and you're looking at the the dialogue and going, what what's the character trying to do? What's the point of the scene? And so you, you're kind of have a the screenwriter's hat on in order to understand what you're visually trying to convey. Um, and then you're looking at performance of acting and going, what's the tone of the scene? And and visualizing you, you're picturing what it will look like when it's finished, even though they're just in these kind of comic book drawings. And so it's a fantastic training ground for directing because every scene is like a short and here's the, here's your, your in and your out. And slowly over your doing that, you start to take on more and then into directing where you're putting your arms around the whole movie. So it's like a very natural progression in animation. Not that that's the only way um, to, to come into directing in animation. You mentioned the the sense of, of making each scene as a story, which I think is the, the perfect opportunity to focus on a particular scene where two characters are, are jumping <laughs> over a wall. How do you start to kind of come up with the visual look of a scene like this? We have Don and Eep, who are two teenage girls who meet for the first time, and they come from totally different worlds. And we knew we wanted a scene where Eep who's this wild child, brings Dawn outside her wall. She's lived in this kind of gilded cage for so long. And so Eve feels for her and wants to show her how beautiful the unknown world can be. And so I almost go to like, who, what, where, right? It's like, so whose scene is this? And we wanted it to be Eve's point of view where she knows the world, but then we're gonna like transition into Dawn's point of view to see something new. And then it's like in in terms of the concept, you go, okay, well, how do we show something new, not only to Don, but also to the audience who's seen Crude's One, who's seen a fantastical world. We needed a location that would look like one thing and then become something totally unexpected. Once we have that kind of guideline of like, okay, this is what the scene's about. Then we go like, how do we visualize this? And then the storyboard artist really brings so much to What's, what's the feeling? Um, how, how much are you seeing of the character's expressions? And so every step of the process um, really kind of adds to, um, to the end feeling that you get. Oh man, is this your ride? Nah, it's my dad's. Listen to this baby purr. See that pig gator over there? Yeah. Want to jump it? Yeah. See that chicken seal over there? Yeah. Want to jump it? Yeah. See that wall? Yeah. Want to jump it? Yeah. I'm not allowed to go outside the wall. Don't worry. We'll be back before anyone. 
So as you're uh, on this process, are you editing it as you go? At what point do you start to, to assemble the, the sequence? Is that right at the end of the process as it would be for a live action film? Or are you editing the scenes as you start to animate them? When we talk about editing, that's like looking at how how long is a sequence? How does it fit in the movie? Where where does it, you know, what's the, the last scene cut from? And, and so we have the script, which we go, okay, that scene feels the right length. And then the storyboard process allows you to see how that might flow and get a sense of it. But then by putting it in an editorial, you you start to really get the, the feeling of it. And every few months, we actually put the whole movie up in storyboards or whatever stage it's in. It's pretty, it's, it's really rough to look at, but it gives you an idea of like how everything, how all the pieces fit together. That's the fun part about animation. It's, it's not just a straight, okay, we, we, we finished it. It's always kind of reworking, reworking. So. Okay, as a, as a final uh, quick question, what advice would you, you give to young people that are starting to make animation themselves? Evidently they can't make it at this scale, but are there any tricks that you can use to start animating your very own film? It's awesome how many resources are out there, how much is online that people can, can look at, draw from, be inspired by, and definitely technology has made it easier to, to make your own work. I think the, the, the key advice I would kind of give is finding your voice. What, and, and that comes from trial and error of just trying stuff, uh, but also just like living and, and, you know, it's great to be into animation, but also, you know, have hobbies, things like that, because they, they kind of come into forming your worldview and that's what makes someone stand out over someone else, which is like, wow, they really bring a voice to their work. Thank you very much. That's a, a lovely point to end on. It's been a pleasure to talk to you, Joel. Uh, likewise, Noah. Thank you. <laughs>